Hey guys, happy Friday. I hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, today I wanna to take a look at something I've done in the past. Uh, I just kinda of wanna bring it up to speed and make it a bit more modern, uh, maybe a bit more useful for my new audience here. Uh, about a year and a half ago, it was January of 2019, I did a video on setting up a home surveillance system uh, using a Raspberry Pi and some webcams and that sort of thing, uh, using a platform called Motion iOS. Uh, recently though, I've noticed or I found out that they have a Docker image that we can take a look at. So in this video, I wanna show how to get set up using Motion iOS in Docker. So in the original video that I did about a year and a half ago, we did that with a Raspberry Pi, which made it so you could plug in uh, USB cameras and that sort of thing. Uh, because we're doing things in a virtual environment using Docker, that's not going to be an option this time. Instead, we're going to need to use an IP camera that supports RTSP, which is the real-time streaming protocol. Now, a lot of cameras out there that you can get will do that. Uh, you've just got to kind of dig through some of the settings and find it. However, there are some cameras that don't have that ability um, and require a firmware flash to support RTSP. And in this case, uh, I'm actually gonna be using a WISE camera with a custom firmware on it uh, that allows the RTSP uh, protocol to be used. Uh, if you're interested in a video on how to, how to uh, install that firmware, definitely let me know in the comment section down below and I'd be happy to make that video for you to show you how to do that. Uh, so the rest of this video is going to be uh, going under the premise that you understand that you're going to need an IP camera, uh, preferably one that supports RTSP. Again, that's the real-time streaming protocol. So once you've got that available to you, uh, we can move on with the rest of the video. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at what it's going to take to get Motion iOS set up in Docker. Okay, so here we are on the GitHub page for uh, the, the maintainer of Motion I, which of course is the, uh, the front end for Motion. Uh, so if we scroll down just a little bit, of course, this is specifically their Docker page. Uh, they've got other options over here on ways to install, but right now we're interested in this Docker page. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can see this command right here that you would normally run in an SSH uh, command to get it up and running. But again, uh, as I've mentioned in several videos in the past, we like to do things in stacks. So I've gone ahead and modified this into a stack. So let me pull that up right here. Uh, so this is what our stack is gonna look like, and I've added some notes to it uh, so that it's easier to kind of read through in a couple of different areas. Uh, of course, all of this will be available in the blog post linked in the description down below. So uh, the first few lines here are pretty standard stuff. Uh, until we get down to the volumes, again, it's fairly standard though, uh, nothing out of the ordinary uh, for what you might expect from a stack uh, if you followed any of my other videos in the past. So. Uh, the first one, uh, we're not gonna change that. That is uh, getting uh, the, the Docker container to have access to the system so it can pull up the actual local time zone and get the correct time for the container. Uh, below that, the next one, we've got this ETC slash motion I uh, being mounted to itself in this case. This is gonna be so, uh, where you're gonna store your configuration files. Uh, of course, you know that I like to uh, have a config folder that's set up dedicated to all of my configuration files. So we will be changing the first half of this once we get it into Portainer. Now the third line, uh, this is where all of your files are going to be stored as it's recording uh, video and that sort of thing. So make sure that you put this on a large hard drive if you've got that available. Uh, there are some things that you can do here for backups, uh, including using Google Drive to backup uh, your media if you wanna do that. And I will uh, touch on that very briefly uh, once we get to that point in the video. Uh, but just know that this last line here is for your file storage. Uh, so make sure again that that's on a, uh, a hard drive that's big enough to handle video files, uh, preferably lots of them, as this will be recording basically all of the time. Uh, below that, we've got a port uh, that, uh, we're, that we'll use to actually access everything, the dashboard and whatnot uh, for that container. And then we're gonna say uh, restart. I actually wanna change that to uh, unless uh, stopped. Uh, otherwise, it's just even if you stop it, uh, it'll, it'll try to reboot itself. We don't want that. Uh, we only want it to reboot itself if there's an issue. Um, but if you intervene, you don't want it to continue to restart. So uh, this is the basic gist of what you're gonna need for uh, launching this in a container. So let's jump over to Portainer and let's create a new stack and then we'll click on add stack and we'll paste that in here. Now, what you may have noticed, uh, 
In fact, I'll just go back here. I do have traffic installed on here. Uh, I was doing some other testing, wiped out everything on this uh, development server. Uh, so we're starting with a clean slate this morning. However, this will work if you've already got other things installed. Uh, however, I've got traffic installed because you can actually make this accessible from the internet if you wanted to do that. And we'll touch on that very briefly as well. Uh, just know that you will need um, to follow the tutorial that I've got set up using traffic and Cloudflare. I will link that in the blog post as well. Uh, so if you want to add the ability to uh, view this remotely, you'll want to uh, go and watch that video as well. So you know how to get traffic and uh, Cloudflare is set up to do the next step, which is adding this to traffic. So uh, again, let's go back into adding a stack. We'll paste this in. We're going to give it a name. And then basically what we need to do, again, we're going to leave this line alone. We're not going to change that. Our configuration, though, we are going to change. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll jump over here to Open Media Vault. And right here, you can see that I've already got a folder created for uh, configuration. So what I'll do is I'll just drag this up here and I'm going to just double click. Uh, I'm going to copy this. Oops. And then we're going to come over here to my config line and I'm going to paste that in there. And I'll say I will add motion uh, I to the end of that so that it drops it in its own separate folder. And then below that, again, we need to put, uh, we need to have a separate folder for all of our media. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create a folder here. I'm going to call this motion I, uh, oops, files. And we'll go ahead and select our drive. We'll set this to everybody can read and write. We'll click save. Then we'll jump over here to SMB CIFS. We want to, of course, want to make sure this is enabled. Uh, we'll click shares and we'll click add a share. Click the drop down. Select the motion I files, public needs to be only guests, and then we can click save and then apply and yes. Okay, so now that we have that, we can go back to shared folders and we can grab uh, the absolute path. If you don't have absolute paths showing up here, of course, you can hover over any of these header lines, uh, click the little drop down arrow that's there, go to columns and toggle absolute path on. So now we'll right click, go to inspect. Just gonna double click that and copy, oops. And then we'll paste this right in there like so. And now we've got everything that we need set up in Portainer so that we can now launch the container and jump into the dashboard. So let's go ahead and scroll down and click on deploy the stack. Okay, so now we've got Motion I running, it looks like, so we'll go ahead and click on there. We'll go to the logs um, and we'll just give this a second to uh, to see what it's going to do here. It should be pretty much ready to go. So what we can do then is go to port uh, 87, oops, 8765. And here we're presented with a login. Uh, the username here uh, is admin. There is no password. And now we've got the option to add a camera because there are no cameras present. Okay, so there are a couple of different ways that we can add cameras from this screen. Uh, the first one is like it says right here, we can click here to add a camera um, and then you can uh, select your options here or you can come up to the top left, click the drop down and click add a camera um, and it'll basically take you to that same spot. Now the reason there, uh, I'm showing both of those is once you add a camera uh, for the first time, this uh, blue text won't be there. So I wanted to show you that this is the better way uh, that you'll, or the, the way you'll most likely be adding additional cameras to your setup. So uh, what we'll do is we'll click on add a camera. And what we wanna do is add a network camera. So here it's asking for a URL, a username and a password. Now, once you enter those uh, three things, the camera uh, option down here will fill itself in. So what we need to do in order to get uh, the information to fill in here uh, is actually log into the uh, WISE app. Uh, this is only going to apply if you're using a WISE camera though. So if you've got other cameras, you've got other uh, systems, you're gonna have to use uh, the resources available for those particular cameras in order to get the information you need for this part. So let's go ahead and take a look at the app. Okay, so here is uh, my phone. I, I'm using Samsung DeX. Normally I would just record my screen on my phone, but this is just easier. So uh, here I've got Samsung DeX pulled up so that I can use my phone uh, on my desktop and record what's going on here. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click the uh, little button there. And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna look for WISE. Uh, so we'll go clear to the end because of course that's how it is. And we'll go ahead and click that. And um, then I'm just gonna select Office Cam. Oops. 
And then I'll select the gear up here. Now, again, this is only going to apply to wise cameras, um, but I want to kind of show you what you're looking for uh, when it comes to pulling up the information you need for the RTSP stream. So then we'll uh, come down to uh, advanced settings. We'll scroll down to where it says RTSP. We'll click here. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we've got uh, the address that you would normally use. You would actually just put that in your browser and that would uh, then display uh, the stream. But uh, we need to kind of break this up a little bit here. So uh, now that we can see what I've got going on here, I've got a username and a password and an IP address. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just kind of drag this out of the way for right now. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, RTSP and I'll say uh, 192.168.1.29 slash live. And then the uh, username is admin and then uh, PA55W0RD. And here you can see that it's automatically filled in RTSP slash TCP camera. There are no other options there. I guess you could do UDP if you wanted, um, but we go ahead and click okay. <clears throat> and here we go. Now you can see uh, if I pick this up and uh, point it at my face here, uh, now you can see that it's working, but it's kind of choppy and slow. Okay, so the next thing we want to do here is actually make it so that it's not quite as choppy and it's got the right uh, resolution, that sort of thing. So what I'll do, so I'll scroll down here to where it says video device. That's what I'm looking for here. So camera one, you can name this, you know, whatever you want to name it, uh, desktop camera. Um, you'll leave all of this other uh, alone. Uh, if your camera starts being a little weird, you can adjust the automatic brightness there. So let's tr uh, take this up to 720p. And you could rotate this, oops, uh, if, in case you needed to mount the camera sideways or upside down, uh, you can rotate the cameras in here. <clears throat> um, and then we can adjust this frame rate to be, you know, up to 30 FPS. And then we can go ahead and click on apply. And now uh, we can see that this is actually uh, working a little bit better here. So uh, now we can kind of see, you know, there's, there you are uh, looking at you, looking at you, looking at you. So, um, now we can see that everything's working. Uh, everything seems to um, uh, not be quite as choppy, not as slow. Uh, and of course, you can adjust uh, these settings to fit your needs for um, for resolution, for frame rates, whatever it, you happen to need for that, you can adjust there. Oh, you also, uh, you'll wanna change the password here. Uh, so you, remember, we, we logged in with just the username admin. Uh, you'll want to put a password in there, uh, especially if you attach this to traffic and a domain name. Uh, otherwise, people can just type in admin and view all your cameras, and that's no good. So now, like I said, by default, uh, it's storing it here. Uh, we already remounted uh, this path right here to a different area. And here you can see uh, that I've got 233.7 gigs available for storage on that drive presently. Oh, here we go, upload media files. If you set this to on, uh, you can upload pictures and movies. Uh, they call movies, like that's just the video files that the, the camera generates. Uh, and you've got some different options here. Uh, I'm a big fan of uploading to Google Drive. Uh, that way I've got uh, an immediate offsite backup for everything. All you've got to do to make that work is click on Google Drive. Uh, the locations, you could just say um, motion I oops, camera, and then you can obtain a key. Select your Google Drive account. Say allow. Then it's going to give you uh, this uh, this key here. Of course, this isn't going to work uh, when this goes live, but that's what the key will look like. So go ahead and copy that. Go back over, paste it in there. Click on test service. And if everything goes right, you should get um, kind of an affirmative response there uh, saying that it worked. Uh, for some reason, we didn't. Uh, oops, that's not going to work. Oh, OK, so accessing uh, the upload service succeeded. So that's good. Now it should automatically start uploading video files to Google Drive. So that's all there is to getting um, Motion iOS set up on Docker and attaching an RTSP uh, IP camera to the system. Now, the one last thing that I want to touch on here just real quick is how to make this accessible from the internet uh, so that you can go to, you know, like cams.yourdomain.com uh, or you can obviously name that whatever you'd like it to be. Uh, I've got it set up. If we come over here to, to here, cams.dbtechdemo.com and all we've got to do next <clears throat> is go over here to Portainer uh, go into our containers, open up Motion Eye, click on Duplicate and Edit. 
And then we're gonna go to labels and we're gonna add four labels to this. So I'm just gonna click that uh, four times and then we can start pasting some stuff in here. Okay, so our first label is going to be uh, enable traffic. This is gonna be true. Uh, this is just telling traffic to be able to communicate with this container. Uh, next, <clears throat> oops. Um, we're going to uh, set up the router for the URL. Uh, so again, like I said, we're going to have this, at least for my setup, be cams.dbtechdemo.com. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is tell the entry point to be web. Uh, that's gonna be the network that it's gonna use. And then the last one that we're gonna do here <clears throat> is we're gonna tell it which port to use. Uh, we're basically going to uh, force which port it's gonna use, which is 8765. Uh, just like so. And then once we've got those four things in there, then we can come over to network and switch this over to web and then click on deploy the container and replace. Okay, so now we can click on logs here. It says the server has started. So let's go ahead and come back over here and uh, refresh. And I haven't put a password on there, so we should just be able to do that. Okay, so now uh, this is working again. Uh, so that's good. That tells us that that part uh, to be able to access it locally is working just fine. So now let's type in cams.dbtechdemo.com. And just like that, we got the same thing here. Now, of course, uh, you would probably want to uh, have that set up on an SSL. Uh, because I'm already logged in, that's why we're able to see this. Uh, it stored the cookie from my previous login. Um, but that's how easy it is to get... Uh, Motion iOS set up on Docker running through traffic to be able to access from anywhere with an internet connection. Okay guys, there you go. There's how to set up Motion iOS uh, in Docker, uh, both uh, for local and remote access. Uh, so you can easily monitor all of your IP cameras. Uh, again, whether you're at home, whether you're away, whatever the case may be, it's a pretty simple process to get Motion iOS set up and running. So I hope you found the video helpful. And of course, if you did, it would be great if you guys could just take a second to click the thumbs up button. It would help me out a bunch. Uh, also, if you're interested in videos like this, also, if you're interested in videos like this, where we're setting up different functionality on home servers, definitely get subscribed. I've got several new videos uh, kind of coming this way very soon. Uh, lots of di different ideas uh, that I'm pretty excited to get videos out about. So if you're interested in that, definitely get subscribed. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, you can do that in a few different ways. Uh, liking and subscribing are both very easy, fast ways to help uh, support. Also, there's some merch down below if you want to get something for yourself, uh, or if you want to do something like uh, send a one-time tip you can use coffee if you want to become a patron over on patreon there are a few different levels at which you can subscribe uh, the five and ten dollar levels will give you access to a uh, patrons only discord server where we can hang out and chat about whatever you want to chat about so uh, with all that being said i think i'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here as always thanks for your time i always appreciate your support and i'll talk to you in the next video